After a difficult winter which has seen the championship have a complete reform, the DTM is back in 2021 with new cars and big stars on the grid. Here is everything you need to know ahead of the 2021 DTM. First of all, let's address what led to the reform. For years, DTM has featured the world's fastest touring cars, but the speed came at a literal cost. And in 2017, Mercedes, who had been in the championship since its rebirth in 2000, announced they would not compete past the end of 2018. When the world ground to a halt last year, Audi announced its withdrawal, and with no opposition left, so did BMW. The DTM had no cars left on the grid for 2021. To try and survive, the expensive Class 1 regulations have been scrapped, in favour of the popular global GT3 formula and a move has been made to focus on privateers instead of just big budget manufacturers. So, what are GT3 cars then? GT3 has existed since 2006 and has grown to be the most popular class of racing around the planet. The cars in it are race versions of road going supercars and a process called balance of performance ensures that all cars have an equal performance which leads to incredibly close racing. Competing in the DTM this year are Audi R8s, BMW M6s, Ferrari 488s, Lamborghini Huracans, Mercedes AMG GTRs and a McLaren 720S. One thing which makes the DTM unique in the world of GT3 racing is its format. Each weekend features two races, one on Saturday and one on Sunday, which both run to 55 minutes plus one lap. The respective grids are decided by separate qualifying sessions which are run in the morning of each race, and for the season opener at Monza, the races will only be 50 minutes, due to concerns that the cars may struggle to complete the race distance without needing to refuel. Each race features a mandatory tyre change, and only a single driver competes in each car. In terms of championship points, the DTM uses the FIA system of 25 for a win, 18 for second, 15 for third and so forth, with 3, 2 and 1 points awarded to the top 3 in qualifying. Given the DTM is a German based championship, it makes sense that the majority of rounds are held there, but this season will actually start in Italy, as the championship heads to Monza on the 19th and 20th of June. The other 6 confirmed dates are as follows. Euro Speedway Lauswitz in July, Circuit Zolda in the Nürburgring in August, the Red Bull Ring in Assen in September, and the traditional season finale at the Hockenheim Ring on the 2nd and 3rd of October. Also penciled in is a street circuit round at the Norris Ring, which was scheduled for July, but a date has yet to be confirmed after the race was postponed. This year's DTM is set to see 21 drivers compete, but will start off with an absentee. Defending champion René Rast is not returning this year, having been promoted to Audi's Formula E programme. Returning, however, is runner-up Nico Muller, who has moved from App Sports Line to Rast's former team, Team Rosberg, where will be joined by rookie Dev Gore. App Sports Line have, however, remained in the championship, and they're set to be led by 2013 champion Mike Rockefeller, who is being joined by a pair of debutants, Kelvin van der Linde and Sophia Flersch. Both App Sports Line and Team Rosberg are sticking with Audi machinery for 2021. By far the biggest name on the grid this season is Alexander Albon, the former Formula 1 driver being part of Red Bull AF Corsa's partnership to bring Ferrari to the DTM for the first time. Albon is only scheduled to do a part season, with Nick Cassidy taking his seat when he is absent on F1 reserve duties, but as things stand, Albon is only set to miss one round at the Red Bull ring. Racing under the Red Bull branding, as opposed to Albon's Alfa Tori livery dentry, is Liam Lawson, Formula 2 race winner and sports car rookie. The other XF1 driver on the grid is Timo Glock, who will be competing in one of three BMWs this year. Glock finished last season top BMW driver and fifth in the championship, and for 2021 has joined Roa Racing alongside sixth place Sheldon van der Linde. Completing the BMW fold is two-time champion Marco Whitman, who's driving for Volkenhurst Motorsport. After two years out, Mercedes are back in the DTM this season, with seven cars all being given factory support. Team HRT are running the duo of Maximilian Gertz and Vincent Abril, with the possibility of a third car at a later date, 
and Group M Racing have signed Daniel Yonkudea. The biggest name in the Mercedes fold is Gary Paffett, making his return to the championship after winning the 2018 title before Mercedes withdrawal. Paffett will be driving for Mucka Motorsport, and the other Mercedes are those of Lucas Auer and Philip Ellis for Team Winwood and Arjun Miney for Team Get Speed. The grid is rounded out by two more full-time entries, the T3 Motorsport Lamborghinis of Esteban Muth and Esme Hawkey, who joins Flersch as the first women on the grid since Rahel Fry and Susie Wolfe in 2012. Towards the end of the season, JP Motorsport are also expected to join the show, with a sole McLaren for Christian Kleen. More McLarens were expected, but sadly both Two Seas Motorsport and Jensen Button's Rocket Team RJN have not entered. The DTM is available to watch in most territories around the world, although frustratingly a UK TV partner has yet to be announced. In Germany, it will be aired on Sat 1, and selected views, such as onboards and support races, are set to be available on the DTM's website without geoblocks. Who do you think will win the DTM this year? Who are you supporting? Please let me know in the comments below.